What's happening? This is Len Davis with Pangeality Productions, and I uh, am here in Kathmandu, Nepal. And my old friend Navin is with the band Cadenza, and uh, I'm back here after 18 years ago. I used to go to a variety of house parties that his band was playing at, and I ran into him the other night at this jazz club, and it turns out he's been in the States for years, and just come back, and he's rocking it with some new members of his band. They're in a recording session up here at the Kathmandu Jazz Conservatory, and I just wanted to check in with them and see what's going on. So, Navin, good to see you, man. Hey, good to see you, too. Man. Sweet. So, tell me a little bit about this album. You guys have a name for it already? Yeah. Um, it's called Back to the Roots. And, um, you know, we haven't had an album since 2005. Mm -hmm. So, it's been quite a while. So, it was kind of time to come up with some new stuff. So, you know, I've been back for about three three months now. So, okay. it felt like you know, I had enough time to work Tweet. with the guys. And We've been playing a lot. And, and so Cadenza as a band has been in effect in Kathmandu for over 20 years now? Yeah, almost. And I mean, 93, I think we came December 93 to Kathmandu from Darjeeling. So almost 20 years. Nice. And at this stage with this new album, what kind of jams are you guys rocking? Like what kind of music? Um, it's, it's, it's a blend of, you know, West African influences with Nepali folk music. And of course, everybody's like, the guys have been, you know, in, into jazz for a while. So it has that jazz element in it as well. But basically, m groovy stuff with uh, you know nice um, melodies that are nice. very ethnically influenced and that kind of stuff. So when you were growing up in Darjeeling, were you hearing West African music? I mean, where does that come into like a Nepali uh, you know, masala? It's, it's it's interesting because when I was growing up in Darjeeling, we were listening to a lot of Western music, so popular Western music, rock and roll, whatever that kind of stuff. I had some Western classical music when I was in school because you know they they had that. But then West African stuff is something that came in when we were in Kathmandu, Tamil, you know, people visiting. So when we were playing at Sam's and places like that, there would be some sax player or some drummer or somebody would just show up. That's how we got into jazz too, you know, sax player comes, we were playing some, you know, playing some Macy Parker and he just starts jamming and he talks about, hey, you know, do you, have you guys heard about Coltrane or all those guys? Because then there were no CDs, brand new thing jazz in Nepal then, you know. So, you know, the, the, that's the same way the West African influence also started happening. Plus, I visited Ghana for a month or so for a research thing. So, you know, I've, I've been really into uh, West African stuff uh, while I was in the States. Nice. And over so that time, also, if I'm not mistaken, you started this jazz festival in Kathmandu, yeah? Yeah. Um, it's been about, what, 11 years now. So we started 2002. Sweet. Started Jazz Fest, and, um, and that's bringing a lot of musicians and uh, a lot of influences too for the guys out here. Sweet. Yeah. And now these days, I mean, you guys are, um, I mean, where I caught you was at Jazz Upstairs, but tell me around town, where are you playing? And are you playing, you know, outside of that venue? Are you playing people's more house parties and other kinds of uh, events around town? Mostly we play at Upstairs. Mm -hmm. like it's every Wednesdays and Saturdays. Okay. But yeah, we do some private gigs and stuff like that. Well. Sweet. And have you developed a following? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. I mean, are yeah, people... It's, it's, it's interesting because, you know, you... I mean, sometimes I look at some of these people and go like, man, you know, these guys come like for every single gig. Every time. Same jams? Or you guys are and, fucking and it up we, with... We, we are trying to like do different huh? things so that we can cater to audiences that are so regular. Mm -hmm. you know? But I think they, they are more into the energy that happens every night because it is different. No matter, like, even if it's the same song, the energy is so different every single time, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, and that's the beauty of jazz is it, it, it demands that, you know? Sweet. So for them, I think that's what it is because I don't understand otherwise. I mean, they don't miss a single gig. So, you know, we've, we've been, for, been fortunate to have uh, Sweet. followers like that. Do you want to just sh hit me up with one of the tracks you guys are working on here and just get a yeah. sound for... Yes, the, this one's a track called Namaste, and it's basically um, saying Namaste to everybody here in Nepal, mm -hmm. you know, and Kaka Kaki means Uncle Auntie, Mama Maizu, you know, um, you said Jojo Nana, nice. brother, uh, sister, but basically talking about, you know, all the, the, the whole scene, the society right now, and uh, the little few difficulties that we face in Kathmandu, and we're kind of like, you know, don't know what to do, and for us, Music probably is the only medium to express. So um, this is a song about you know how we have our power cuts and um, <laughs> you know all yes. of that stuff. I mean, as I roll around Kathmandu, you know, obviously there's a lot of change. There's a lot of kind of 
elements that seem like crisis, you know, like yeah, in terms yeah. of air quality and mm-hmm. you know, electricity and water and all these things. But at the same time, it feels so fucking vibrant. It just seems it like, the, in my experience of coming back and coming back, that there's just such a, right now, an explosive culture of young people Absolutely. and a return of Nepalese. Many people are leaving the country and, you know, trying to find new opportunities. But at the same time, people I just feel like there's, you know, so much, just a tangible vibrancy to a kind of younger scene where Absolutely. folks, I don't know, just a combination of everything. So I would think that right now, the music scene is just, uh, I would assume, just booming in Kathmandu. Is, just much more variety than there ever was. Absolutely. And, um, you know, it, it is a great vibrancy. It's great live music um, uh, venues in Kathmandu. Everybody is like, you know, like the, the KJC, Moksh, all these house of music. These places are, you know, places that weren't there before. I mean, upstairs probably was the only place that was around that really catered to live music, you know. Sweet. And now there are more. And, uh, you know, and the, the young generation is doing great. And you guys are looking, I, I just noticed that my battery is going to run, so I want to hit the track, but are you guys looking to perform outside of Nepal, or are you sort oh, of... Yeah, absolutely. You know, we are hoping, like, um, actually recently <laughs> they're talking about a tour in the U.S. I'm talking to some people in the New Orleans Jazz Heritage Festival. Nice. And then some folks in New York and um, some, some parts in Thailand, and you know. Um, right, making it happen. Yeah, making it happen. Sweet. Why, well, let's check out one of these tracks, and you guys do your thing, and we'll cut out, uh, you know, I'll leave you to do your work. Again, it's Len Davis with Pangeality Productions, and I'm up here in the studio at the Kathmandu Jazz Conservatory. My old friend Nabin and his band Cadenza here in Kathmandu, Nepal, rocking the Afrobeat slash Nepali folk funk jams. <laughs> brother is in Germany playing these sax parts and sending them and he's they're skyping him in right here on the phone into the studio session on that uh, phone over in front of the speaker <laughs> Nepali 
Len Davis and Catmandu with Cadenza. Stay fresh, y'all.